The views expressed and opinions given by the individual hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Z Talk Radio, its affiliates, or sponsors. Hello and welcome to Canadian X Talk Radio. It's Saturday night, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. on the East Coast. I'm your host, Glenn Ferguson. Joining me tonight, we have uh, Philip Cartel, 30 year old entrepreneur from uh, Vancouver. Uh, Philip, you own the SBR Cartel, Silver Cartel. Yep. Tell me about yep. that. Uh, so, SBR Cartel is a clothing line uh, first. Uh, it's um, SBR has two meanings. Uh, SBR of course stands for sober cartel and souls being righteous um it's it we believe it's more than a clothing line it's a movement um and it promotes healthy body healthy mind and and you know uh, just an overall positive way of living so when was the uh, sbr cartel uh, founded it was founded in 2012 october 2012 uh, what kind of clothing do you have on, on your line? uh right now we, we just it's just streetwear so we have um Hoodies, tees, tank tops, a um, bunch of different uh, girl clothing. Uh, we have bags, um, sunglasses, hats, just uh, streetwear, and then we'll we'll be expanding later on. Okay, I got the opportunity uh, to meet your partner, uh, James Tanner, uh, while I was in treatment for uh, 60 days. Uh, he pretty much uh, passed around uh, the clothing rapidly within uh, the treatment center I was at. Uh, how was sales going within the? Uh, it's going really well. Yeah, it's. I mean, we. It's hard to keep up with demand right now. Well, we we need to expand on and build our own little factory. So that's what we're working on right now. We're securing the capital to do that, um, and so we don't have to outsource the production of it, and we can do it all in house. But yeah, it's it's going pretty quick. So where did the idea come from to to run this? Uh, it came from me while I was in treatment. Uh, I was in treatment, and um, I knew that. It currently popular clothing does not promote anything that has to do with sobriety it doesn't have to do anything with uh, you know doing good it's it's all either violence or drug references and and um, I just as having a 15 year old brother it kind of hit home for me just you know all these kids they have nothing to turn to even if they want to go good like they can't go shop for something that has a po positive message on it they just can't because there's nothing cool that would do that and I and I, I thought that I started with just putting a sober on a hoodie, and uh, and we grew from there. So, how do you get involved with James Tanner? James Tanner, uh, he's a great guy. Uh, he's he's uh, he bought in for forty percent of the company, but uh, we met at um, an event. Uh, SBR Cartel Entertainment uh, is is also puts on the sober events where we throw you know sober parties, with, and we'll try to bring in uh, bigger um, ticket uh, performers. Um, but he was there. Uh, uh, the last event we threw and he w walked by the booth where we were selling uh, hoodies and tees and he walked by, he bought a hoodie but he kept by, asked more questions, more and more questions and then the next day he set up a meeting with me and then uh, we, we met, hit it off and yeah, it's been great from there. So how many offices does the SPR cartel have? Just, just one right now, well actually two, uh, one in Edmonton and one in Vancouver. Okay, you also branched out to, to LA as well. To Los Angeles, yeah. We have uh, we currently don't have a, an actual office there right now, but yeah, we we have a presence there with uh, with our guys. But who within the industry or the entertainment industry is actually involved with uh, SBR? Um, well, we're very fortunate uh, in Vancouver. Uh, we're um, uh, the Real Housewives of, um, of Vancouver. Jody Clayman, she's been very 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 supportive. Um, about a year ago, she bought uh, a large amount of clothing for her store and this year she bought a big um, um, big shipment and she, she supports her stuff she wears a lot of the clothing Amanda from the housewives also so, um, supports us and wears our stuff um, we have um, one of our sp sponsored athletes is Janae Noonan she was uh, with bronze 
cha uh, world champion for MMA in t 2010, um, I believe, and also Jason Blake, who's um, is a, a worldwide model. He's uh, t has two billboards right now on Sunset Boulevard um, with with different companies, but he, he's he's supports us really well. Uh, also, Emily Dearhart is another um, one of our sp sponsored uh, models. She's um, a worldwide famous uh, inked athlete um, uh, model. She's on the cover of tattoo magazines all over the place. So yeah. So how did those guys uh, actually hear about <laughs> SPR? How I know. Yeah. It's um, well, uh, Jason Blake. Uh, he contacted me and. Uh, just when we were first starting out, and um, and we we just kind of started talking, and, and our, our our vision was very similar, so he decided to help us out for free. Um, and then um, as as we grew, Janae Nuna contacted us, um, and I I've, and we uh, we started working from there. And um, Emily Dearhart, uh, I reached out to her because um, she has a huge Instagram following, and I, I didn't think she was gonna, you know, write back or anything. But she was very receptive. She was like, "Yeah, totally." And so we started working together as well. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a lot of it as did we did through social media and email. Yeah. What about the entertainment industry in Vancouver? Yeah. Uh, so Jody Clayman, we uh, we just one of us just stopped by her store and kind of started chatting with her, and then she was in there, thank God, and then she like totally fell in love with with the, the message and the idea and. I grew from there. She introduced us to Amanda and, and uh, other friends. So is this uh, industry likely to uh, f form a franchise at some point? Yeah, we, we definitely do uh, want to expand to, um, we already are, we already have SBR Cartel Entertainment, uh, which is going to put on events and, and hopefully, you know, bring, bring artists, um, um, uh, discover artists as well in the recovery community because there's a lot of artists um, uh, that we think are great and we have uh, quite a bit of quite a good venue for to launch them with uh, with the with putting on events, and also SBI Cartel Construction. Um, that's also we have a project right now that's already w in, in a, uh, working right now. And but we want to expand because there's a lot of guys that are going to be in second stage, that you know that that need a break. That they'll work for minimum wage, but you know they have a curfew and all that. So we we might be able to work around that. Let's say if we need demolition, we'll go pick them up during the day here and there. And, and oh, that's nice. Yeah, and then. Um, Kind of give them, you know, an outlet and job, and get, hopefully get them set up. Perfect. So we're we're using this uh, internet-based radio right now to uh, actually promote around the world. Uh, so that's a lot of people in uh, England who are actually interested in finding out about uh, the clothing line. Sure. Uh, any opportunity of going over to uh, across the pond? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I actually I have a few sales from uh, Eng from England uh, just uh, last month. Yeah, so definitely I, I love England. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, also down in Australia, you said you had a contact there in Australia. Yeah. Uh, it, while I was in treatment, um, one of my friends, Jason, he actually um, has a hot sauce called Doyle's Hot Chili Sauce. Yeah. Uh, hot Chili Sauce, I believe. And uh, yeah, so he, he was very, um, he really liked the clothing line and he, he said that there's nothing like that in Australia. And, and I just was kind of thinking about the idea, and uh, yeah, so we're kind of in the works right now of beginning a branch of SBR Cartel Australia, because there's definitely a need for something like that there as well. So what is the entertainment side of your company uh, doing as far as uh, personal events? So, uh, For sure, yeah, so we, we want to do um, uh, sober events, so um, uh, sober events with big ticket items, so we, we want to make it cool, you know, to, to have events because there's you know Friday Saturday night a lot of us that are sober really have nothing to do you know coffee houses are fun for a little bit meetings are fun but you know we, we do still want to have a good time and and find a cool event to go to and so this is what SBR Cartel Entertainment will do we'll, we'll put on good events we'll there'll be you know good budget uh, nice venue you know you can dress up uh, we'll, we'll, we'll most of the time we'll have a good um, big ticket item a uh, big ticket performer there um, and um, yeah and then we'll hopefully we'll um, will lead up to a festival that's I mean we were kind of thinking far ahead but yeah like all you know all s sober you know drug and alcohol free at festival and, you know the, yeah, are you actually using some people that I met in treatment uh, like short uh, yeah the hip-hop artist at some of your events exactly yeah so we uh, as as we were thinking with SBR Cartel Entertainment and we're gonna be having these events with you know with our already established artists it'd be a good launching platform to to uh, launch our artists and so uh, James uh, Tanner, the um, my partner, uh, he um, introduced well, he, uh, introduced me to Short. I I listened to his track and it was just it was amazing. And uh, it's kind of a funny story is that 
we thought he would be opening for uh, our upcoming event on September 13th with Mocha Only, and he said that you know he actually already opened for Mocha Only at Shambhala Festival. So oh wow, yeah. So <laughs> they already know each other, and it's yeah, it's it's going to be perfect. Excellent. Because <laughs> uh, like I say, I went to Cheap Millie's uh, short and gym, mm-hmm. and uh, the, the bonds that we formed uh, during treatment are uh, essential to uh, continued sobriety. Mm-hmm. Uh, you said you went through a recovery center yourself. Yep. Uh, do you mind me asking uh, what your uh, drug of choice was? Alcohol, yeah. Just alcohol? Yeah. Uh, well, alcohol and then all the stuff, the cocaine comes with it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, how long did you do treatment for? Uh, 20 days. 28? Yeah. So th- just the basic stuff. Just the basic, yeah. I was fortunate, uh, you know. I, I on right the day I got out, I started my graphic design degree, and uh, so and it just hit, and I hit, hit ground running from there. I was, I was fortunate, yeah, to to not. So uh, how much sobriety do you have now? Uh, so one year and ten months. Oh, nice. Yeah, congratulations on Thank that. You. I know how tough it is to uh, maintain sobriety, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm doing quite well myself. But sure. it's, it's nice to see someone who has uh, a year clean. Oh, thank you. Uh, what do you think about uh, I've asked a couple of guys at uh, some of the meetings I've been to have been asking me about because uh, the, they know that I know James mm-hmm. uh, reference uh, how to get involved with spreading the word um, sure well we are actually working on sales rep positions but they can always contact us on Facebook SBR okay. Cartel um, um, Facebook slash SBR Cartel um, if you message us uh, one of us will get back to you um, We'll send you a catalog, and uh, the way it works, well, you'll get a percentage for any sales you faci- facilitate. Um, and uh, yeah. yeah, I took a look at some of the stuff on uh, your website for the clothing. Uh, what is OG? I just wanted. To uh, original. Uh, original. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So th- you offer both men's, women's, yeah. children. Yeah, both um, uh, men's, women's, children. Um, yeah, it's sometimes it's it's pretty. You know, it's it's. Kind of similar, uh, simpler stuff right now, and then we'll expand on you know in the later months. Now the logo for SBL can tell yeah. it's a double-headed eagle, I believe it is. Uh, where did that come from? So I, you know, I, I really like um, military imagery and and kind of, uh, and stars and and all that. And uh, I'm I'm Russian myself, and I really like double-headed eagle. But I, I kind of started researching. What does it mean in different cultures and different uh, empires? And it really just meant to represent two things, and then kind of fit well with with our message because you know when you get cleaned up, you have a healthy body, healthy mind, and that's what it represents: in control over your healthy body and healthy mind. Janessa, do you have any questions? Oh, you threw that at me, Jesus! She's uh, sitting in the background, uh, just listening to the conversation. But it's fair to say that she might have something to add. He just threw me up uh, for. He just threw me under the bus. Is what he did. Um, that's what I do. Yeah, that's what you do. It's down there. Uh, so you you have aspirations to go further. Um, what's say what's some of your long term goals? Because um, obviously you know you have a business plan. Yeah. And what's some of your long term goals and to reaching that business plan? Sure. Uh, well, uh, I think our biggest. A goal right now, in the, in the shorter term, is to to have everything in house to create a uh, a factory of sorts. So, well, we have everything under one roof. But we have uh, we'll have we'll be able to make t- t- t-shirts, pr- uh, produce, sew um, everything, and um, and that way we can employ a lot of the people in the second second stage housing. We can maybe show them how to do it. Maybe discover some people just can discover a, fa- a passion that they didn't know they have. Like like. For me, I was doing investor relations. I never thought that I'd be doing graphic design on a, you know, on a, on, or have a clothing line two years ago that would just seem impossible to me. So it, it hopefully we'll be able to facilitate you know people discovering the passions because I think that's a lot of us um, you know kind of go to drugs and, and, and alcohol is just because we don't have that passion driving us. And I think when you discover that, it's it all that that void and stuff inside you is filled now. And uh, so. I, that's what we want to do, and then we want to do that globally um, with the construction and uh, with our with our factory of sorts um, in in Vancouver, and then hopefully we'll spread out to to United States and then Australia. Because yeah, that that you know, to me, as somebody that uh, you know, my my addiction is actually food. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, and I know what it, how hard it is to you know lose the weight, um, but for somebody that you know, with the people that I have dealt with that have addiction issues or addiction problems or whatever to get their self-confidence back yeah 
is I think the biggest step. That's yeah, absolutely. You know, and then to start being able to socialize again and and make you f feel good about yourself that I'm earning this money. I'm not putting it away on something else. And you know, and of course, at the end of the day, you have to be ready mentally to do it. You have to sure. make that decision. For sure. And until you're ready to do that. Yeah. Like anything, and you made that decision. Like you made that decision after 28 days. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing this again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've been down this road. Don't want to do it. No, no. Now I've got my other focus. Yeah. Because I know with Glenn here, he's very. He gets very focused in on things. He, he's driven. Um, he's very driven. A little OCD at times. Oh, well. A little. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she's a. His daughter is has gone down the male line, right? But to get his self-confidence back, and that's what I've noticed that coming back from this treatment center, is they've given him his self-confidence. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, like just the difference from when he went in, and he was beaten down, he was feeling miserable, he did not feel good, to where he's at now, and where he can go. Absolutely, I to, I'm totally understand. I, I can definitely relate to that. I mean, my confidence was at, at zero when I went in. I was, I was beaten down. Yeah, I, because I I think um you know with alcohol, my alcoholism was so bad. Well, it was I, I didn't drink every day, but as soon as I touched it, I'd wake up in jail, right? And then, and so, it was just I kind of stopped trying, right? Because you're, you're just gonna mess it up, you know. Yeah. So why go to the new job? Why try? to do this, try to try to do that. I'll just try to do the minimum so I don't have that much to lose because I'm, I'm going to mess it up, right? And so then, then knowing that after that first year that like, I didn't wake up you know, in jail for the last year. That's crazy, you know, like that for the last 10 years before that, that was, that was I was expecting that, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I completely relate Well, see, so Glenn didn't have that. He didn't end up in jail. He would basically, you know, with the depression and the and, PTSD yeah. and the alcoholism, he would that chair and him had a, a very good relationship. But I'd pretty much just switch off. Yes. Um, yeah. I was here, but I wasn't here. Uh, yeah. Um, so it's one of those things, like they say in uh, the NA mandate that the uh, jails and institutions and death. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty much true for a lot of people. Like I know people who have actually died because of their addiction, uh, which Absolutely. is sad. Not, but uh, maintaining that sobriety is a daily thing you know you have to take it's it one day at a time lifetime lifetime of vigilance for sure well of course because on top of that of course it's legal mm -hmm. yeah but you know when i say you know when he says or i say well glenn's a recovering alcoholic because he's not ashamed of it mm -hmm. and that's a big thing that he got out of treatment as well he's not ashamed of this i'm a recovering alcoholic and every day i'll take one day to come time to recover more for sure and uh, they go oh was he violent no. <laughs> yeah, he just wasn't there. He just yeah. wasn't there. He would go to sleep. For sh for you for know, and that they have that perception. And I, I, when you we ran the commercial earlier, that was one of the things I caught on that was your commercial saying how that perception of an alcoholic. Yeah. And you have to be able to start beating up that perception. It, it, absolutely. Yeah. These are just normal people, and it has no social lines. There's no economic lines it doesn't matter how much money or how little money you yeah. have yeah we just have a disease right we, yeah we can't drink like a normie as they say yeah now that they can have a couple of beers and put it down walk away and not touch it again for weeks yeah. at a time whereas an alcoholic now once we get that first drink we just can't stop yeah it's an allergy right yeah for sure and I, and um, I think one of the greatest videos that you know talk about spiritual awakening that like you said it was that I saw that was uh, Craig Ferguson speaks from the heart I don't know if you ever watched that video but that's a video on, online and he kind of talks about his alcoholism and yeah he was just you know he, all he said what really hit home for me was just like some people can't drink I'm one of them and that, that's you know that's all I needed to hear like and then seeing him how successful he is and how comfortable he was in the skin and you know I just kind of wanted that I mean, I, I, I like the fact that what you're doing in a clothing line, because as you say, there is nothing, you know, I have a 19-year-old daughter, okay. excuse me, and, mm, excuse me, I hope you can take that one out. <laughs> no, I can't. I'm leaving that in. <laughs> anyway, um, and to find hoodies besides the ones that I got for her, because she was a competitive athlete for mm -hmm. years, it, you know, wasn't the top <laughs> level or anything like that, but she, all during high school, she swam. And that's what she got to wear because to go out and find a, a hoodie or a t-shirt that doesn't have some kind of 
as you say, gang message on it. Mm-hmm. She's not a gang banger. Doesn't yeah. want to be a gang yeah, yeah. banger. Yeah. Never has had any desire to be. Yeah. She doesn't want to wear that stuff. She wants a design that is representative of culture. It's it's you know it's it's um, it's cool, right? It's it's, it's cool, it's, but it's, it's an, not. But yeah, but it, uh, it's not telling you to do something you don't want to do, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and she's quite uh, even at thirteen, fourteen, when she's still going through that puberty stage, and she still had her mind set. You know, I don't want that. That's, that's exactly. You know, I want to be cool, but. So to find a line out there that is will cater to that younger population and some old bag like me that might wear it as well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I turned 50 in two mm. days. I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> How did the image come up with uh, Bill Phillips with the bandana? Uh, well, because it kind of plays on the all anonymous thing. Right? Yeah. yeah, so just that. Just, just, uh, yeah. What are the other images are coming up? Right so now? Um, yeah, we have one with uh, with Marilyn. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just I just love her, and then she she did die of you know she she was a troubled soul with alcoholism and, and addiction, and so we don't want to just have just the good guys, but also just have the troubled souls as well, kind yeah. of the iconic images as well. So yeah, I know we uh, I was in a uh, group with uh, James Tanner, mm-hmm. and uh, one of our counselors had an issue about uh, having James Dean. Oh, James Dean, yeah. yeah. Well, I, with him, I just think he's the is the, the original guy of cool that created the cool factor, right? And it's and it's just really coming back the whole haircut that he had and everything. So, I just really like his style and and yeah, it's because it, it, we are we also want to be a stylish clothing brand, right? So we don't want to just uh, isolate ourselves with with imagery. Well, yeah, you have to. You want to be able to. Um, be a Lululemon. Yeah. Or a TNA. No, I wouldn't say Lululemon. Not now. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Well, they've definitely done a good number on themselves. Yeah. Well, you start shortcutting your fabrics and stuff like that, and guess what happens? Yeah. Actually, I gotta thank uh, Felipe because you just handed me one of the hoodies and uh, it's good quality oh, clothing. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much for that. You're welcome. Absolutely. Okay, we're quickly gonna go to a commercial break and we'll be right back after these messages. Stay tuned. You're listening to Z Talk Radio Network. I am living on Channel Z. Whether we want to admit this or not, this is our black plague. There's 25 million people that suffer from this illness. We have an epidemic. It's a national crisis that untreated addiction cost our economy over $550 billion last year. It is disgraceful that we have done so little about it thus far. Once you're an addict, you're that thing that they have to have. So many people think of addicts as homeless people living under bridges. The media is difficult for us to battle against because the negative news about addiction is dramatic. You know what we in the media do? We wink wink it. We snoop dog it. Hey, oh yeah, they're stoned. That's fine. If everyone thinks of alcoholism and addiction as a negative thing, no one's going to want to go get help. As a culture, we are still very rooted in just say no. Drugs are menacing our society. We're going to try to incarcerate our way out of the addiction problem. Our jails are full of addicts and alcoholics. They're all pulled up in one spot. When you're caught, you will do time. Recovery is what you need, not prison. Hello? Alcoholism has too long been a taboo subject. The shame and secrecy are just as deadly as the disease itself. Our numbers are unbelievably strong, but yet we have no voice. We know about every issue out there, but people don't know how important the issue of recovery is. As a person in long-term recovery from an illness that has no cure, but an illness that has a solution. If we could ever tap those 20 million people in long-term recovery, you change this overnight. Now it's my turn to teach you that recovery works. History's on our side. History will show one day who and what we are. 
So I say we make history. Voices are out there. We have to find and open the hearts. And I think those hearts want to be open. I refuse to feel ashamed of who I am. I most certainly will not be embarrassed that I'm an addict. I'm going to tell whoever I damn well want to. There's a lot of us. Everyone knows somebody. Okay, hello and welcome back to Canadian X Talk Radio, Saturday night. It's now, ooh, 20 after 7. Uh, joining us tonight is uh, Philippe Cartel, a 30-year-old entrepreneur uh, and owner-operator, founder and president of the SBR Cartel. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Now, uh, you said you're doing uh, events that are coming up uh, in the near future. Uh, Recovery Day, September 13th, I believe. Yep. Uh, how do you get involved uh, with uh, the local events? Um, so we with the recovery day. Um, I'm actually on the committee for recovery day, and I am the, the entertainment chair. Um, so we're doing the day part of the event, which is on September 13th from 12 to 3 at Queen Elizabeth Theater on Georgia Street in Vancouver, and we're gonna follow that up with the after party in New Westminster at uh, about 8:30 and 9 with the doors uh, opening, and uh, with Mocha only being the performer there. Where, where at in New Westminster? Uh, at Club Metro at um, Carna- Carnarvon Street. Carnarvon? <laughs> Carnarvon? Carnarvon Street, yeah, hopefully I said that right. <laughs> yeah. So, who's joining uh, your acts? Uh, so, and uh, we are actually introducing one of our first um, uh, SBR Cartel Entertainment's first artist, Short. Um, a rapper from Vancouver, he's amazing. Um, so yeah, we, we can't, we're excited to have him open for Mocha only. Yeah, I actually had the opportunity, like I said earlier, uh, with uh, spending time in treatment with uh, Short himself. And uh, I'm actually looking at uh, doing a video with Short oh, nice. uh, for a promo for one of his new songs. So it's going to be an interesting one for me, uh, getting involved with the video side of things. Uh, Janessa? <laughs> yes, I'm listening. S- standing there with your mouth wide open. Oh, well, that's, not, that's not unusual. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? I have a very self-depreciating sense of humor sometimes. <laughs> I think it's I, I just I like the fact that you're really uh, expanding and like you said you have your construction SBR construction you have SBR entertainment plus your clothing line and what you're trying to do is um, diversify but not so much that oh, to make all sorts of money what you're trying to do is say we want to help these people get back on their feet get some get a life back for sure, yeah, and get that confidence back, and 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 find their passion. Hopefully, you know. And, and if we, if you know, if we help one person get do that, I think that it'll, it'll be it'll be good. But uh, you know, if we can do it more than one. Well, sure. a couple of the guys that we I met at Glenn's Treatment Center, um, Billy and Herb, mm-hmm. uh, both First Nations, um, and we've introduced them to one of our very very close friends, Eagle Child, and uh, I think Herb's supposed to start apprenticing under him, isn't he? Yeah, the uh, Eagle Child is a silversmith. He makes rings of it. One on there, and yeah. I actually, there. talked to him about that. Yeah, yeah, and he's he's uh, he's sixty five. Um, he's an elder now, but he's just uh, he's, a, he's just a brilliant guy. <laughs> he's he's a flute carrier. Yeah, Honest. yeah. You, if you ever meet him, you know you you just learn so much because we brought him into the actual treatment center, mm-hmm. and he played and answered questions and and uh, both Herb and and Billy just fell in love with this guy. He's uh, full of wisdom and. He really makes you feel the light, I guess. He's been there. He's he's not. He's gone through his own. Yeah. Troubles. Troubles. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he grew up on the white side. Mm-hmm. I mean, because he, he is obviously um, First Nations. Mm-hmm. He's uh, from outside of them, and he's Cree, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And but uh, like you said, you know, I've really come into the the spiritual side of my of my. And my culture mm-hmm. and he said but I didn't really grow up with it because he says I was an athlete mm-hmm. I did all the athletic things so I didn't really do anything on my culture mm-hmm. now that's where he's gone because he's got a degree in education oh. but that wasn't where his heart lied yeah and that's exactly what you're saying your passion yeah for sure yeah. and because you always will be kind of steering towards your passion you know I found that even because a lot of people have those dreams and, and they never follow up with them and, and and I think it's, I, I kind of 
um, Jim Carrey had a speech the other day. He had a commencement speech at a university, and he said that you know all you all, all you really have is is right now, right? And then, and and the next decision you're gonna make is gonna be based on two things: either it's gonna be based out of love or out of fear. And that's and and you know, unfortunately, we base a lot of our decisions out of fear. Um, you know, well, I, I don't want to get a job because this job just pays me, and I, I might have to look for a long, really long time, or it's gonna struggle starting my own business, and so I'm gonna stay with this. But and uh, yeah, so hopefully yeah, we will um, help people find, you know, operate with love instead of fear, and then find their passion. Like, like they say in step twelve, you know, you carry the message to other alcoholics. Sure. Uh, the SBL cartel is definitely making a big difference on that. For sure. Yeah. Really well, I just like that. It, you know, it's 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 in the now. It's hip. Yeah. And it Thank does. It, the message is there, saying you don't have to drink. You don't have to be cool. Yeah. Easy. And I like the fact that you're doing the entertainment so that the kids nowadays, because, you know, when the, just before he left the treatment center, I think you, he was one of the oldest there. Mm -hmm. Everybody was in their 20s, and they're not able to get out of that lifestyle because they still want to be in... Yeah, you know, we, we still want to party. We still want to have a good time, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's really hard to find something, you know. It's, if you give somebody that's quit drinking at 21 years old, you know, and they... You're, the, the rest of the uh, all the fun you're gonna have is gonna be at an A meeting. You know, it's kind of daunting a bit. You know, yeah, so and, hopefully. And, oh yeah. yeah, I get to hang around with fifty-year-old guys yeah. that drink coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's what it's, we do. Yeah, it's it's good for, but you know, we we still want to have a good time. So hopefully, we'll be you know we'll be able to grow it and grow it and, and have events just that are fun and sober. And and a lot of the times, what I've noticed with the events that we have been throwing. The, the the energy is so positive, you know. There, it's just everyone is there. No, you know, no face. We don't have the social mask of pretending. Everyone, when when you say you're an alcoholic, you kind of drop that ego, you know. Yeah. Which is which is why I, I, why I love this community, and that's why I love throwing those events. Yeah, because that, that's one of the things that you know, like having, and that's one of the reasons maybe my daughter doesn't go out because she doesn't really enjoy drinking. Mm -hmm. She yeah. doesn't smoke, and to go to a party, well, now I've got to dress kind of like a. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to show everything kind of yeah. deal and, and and get drunk so that I can have a good time. And she goes, that's not who I am. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, I would like to go to a band and not have to worry about putting on the art of having to drink just to yeah. fit in or anything like that. And she likes. Well, our, our home group just had a, a barbecue where no alcohol was involved. Mm -hmm. So it just, we still have a good time. No, yeah. Still, sure. There's no need to rely on alcohol to uh, get well and have a good time yeah. because pretty much I, I can't remember half the times that I was in events and uh, got a little bit overboard with alcohol falling down. No, it's embarrassing. For, for sure, absolutely, yeah. And you know, and, and it's what's funny too is that you know with, you have your drunk friends, you know, back when you, when you used to drink, and then you get sober up like, oh, why was I even friends with that person? You know, and yeah. it's, it's just it's unfortunate how. So much of our culture revolves around drinking that you will literally have relationships only because you were drinking together, right? And it's so these the, the relationships you have in recovery are actually truly friends, you know, yeah. that you have. You can open up, and it's actually a healthy relationship. It's not this fake, you know. Well, when both of us are ex-military, and and there's a lot of uh, drinking in the military. It's it, part of the lifestyle. It's mm -hmm. part of the lifestyle. Yeah. And it wasn't until I got out and. You know, we, we still drank quite a bit, you know, before all this kind of went down. But when he started getting sick and started drinking more and more, I started going the other way. Mm -hmm. And now to the point, if I have a drink, I'm a cheap drunk man. <laughs> 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 I, can't, I can't even focus. Well, the problem was I didn't have any friends when I drank. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be around people. I isolated myself at home. And uh, I didn't want to share my booze anyway. So yeah. all the friends I did have were kind of pushed away. And, yeah, I can relate and, to that. And of sure. course, if you go to the bar and you drink at the bar, well, you, it's so much money. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, you you spend money that you don't have, and then you wake up, you're a shameful resort, you know, you're more And then yeah. the circle keeps yeah. going; it gets bigger and bigger. Exactly. And then you're just playing catch up. That's what I. That's what I found myself when I was drinking. I was playing catch up to get myself to like, you know, you know, stage one, and then back, you know, fall below again. Now at the commercial break there, we listened to the uh, online uh, advertisement for Recovery Day. Mm -hmm. uh, you're doing that, of course. Uh, what other events are you looking at uh, after the Recovery Day is done? After the Recovery Day, we have um, 
we're working on an event for Halloween, um, and that's going to be, I don't, I'm, it's going to be a, a, even a bigger artist, and yeah. we're going to, it's going to be about twice as big as, as this one. Um, yes, yeah, so it's going to be a Halloween. Uh, we're flying in um, um, Janae Noonan to, to, to be present, and um, yeah, it'll be another bigger event. We, I can't mention the artist because we're not, we're not. Well, you know, I, I kind of just had this thought process. Okay, sure. now, you, you don't have to agree or anything. I'm just yeah. going to throw this out there. Sure. But one of the things, like, because we're trying to fundraise, I told you about our convention coming up, mm. and uh, which is next June. Um, I'm looking at maybe doing a zombie walk. Mm-hmm. Now that would suddenly tie into saying, say maybe yours. Maybe we could work together on that. Sure. It's a throw out. You don't okay. have to. Don't answer me now. You know, because okay. obviously I've just thrown this at you because it just came to this little brain of mine. Uh-huh. But with something working with Halloween, with mm-hmm. a zombie one. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, then you go on to the the sober, you know, with with Janine and stuff like that nature. Yeah. Kind of make that. I can see your minds just yeah. going. To well, we ha- we have a lot of friends uh, that are in the reality TV industry, like uh, John Zappas from Hornet Collector, oh, nice. and a few of us uh, from uh, reality TV, Sapphire Channel. Oh, nice. So uh, get those to wear shirts and take oh, a photograph f- with them, and that's a little bit of promotion there for you, right there. Definitely, yeah. And uh, well, uh, you know, we have a, a good psychic medium friend of ours. He's he's been on Spook TV. Yeah. Um, but he's also recovering alcoholic. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know, and he's the one that owns our radio station. No, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a bonus right there. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and kind of, kind of a comedian actually, wasn't he? Too? He's quite humorous. Yes, he is. Uh, you, you would a, enjoy. He's him. an amazing medium. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, and so uh, it's kind of, uh, but he's also, a, and I think that was Glenn's first foray of actually something that has admitted that he's a recovering alcoholic. Um, we didn't know that Sharon was as well, but we all went out to the bar last year in, in Winnipeg mm-hmm. and uh, Scotty was the life of the show and completely sober <laughs> nice yeah we didn't really clue in at the time like oh yeah he's not drinking I wonder yeah. why yeah, yeah I, I, f- I found that I, I've, uh, right after I got a treatment I went to the bar and it was just the most uh, like the most nerve wracking experience I had to relearn how to like act and stuff but now it's it's way different experience if I do go mm-hmm. yeah you, you're that guy who actually makes sense towards the whole night you know you you can drive people home, yeah. It's yeah, I've be, I've become a lot of designated driver now, haven't I? I usually yeah. end up yeah. driving. W- one of our hoodies is designated driver hoodie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that I think that's me because every time you know he basically because he was drinking so much, I did all the driving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I had moments of sobriety. <laughs> yeah, uh, they were shorter than my moments of uh, uh, addiction or alcoholism. Yeah, so it's one of those things. I mean, he never he he would come home from work and drink, mm-hmm. and then he wouldn't drink the next you know until after he got home from work again. Yeah, you know, so obviously he didn't drink before he went to work. But, um, you know, yeah, I needed a beer when I got home. Yeah, dealing with the general public was not his favorite. No, thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> coming clean because I have a lot of friends on Facebook mm-hmm. who are, like I say, in, in the industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, to tell them I was kind of embarrassed and ashamed. Uh, of course, when I did uh, tell people before I went away uh, mm-hmm. to treatment, I was surprised at the outpouring of uh, support, uh, especially from people who I had no idea that they had a problem with it, addiction mm-hmm. or alcoholism themselves. Yeah. So it's you know, the honesty part is key to sure. uh, the 12 steps anyway. So yeah. to come clean and find that uh, people weren't going to uh, ditch me from their Facebook page was mm-hmm. quite... Uh, yeah, we had nice. some really amazing support because I typed it up on his Facebook page because he didn't have access to a computer. So yeah. he was um, he has a little better word composition than I do. And mm-hmm. I, he can like obviously he's writing a book himself. He's got mm-hmm. two. He's he's got what chasing the dead, yeah. which is and, uh, just got to finish. And the long road to recovery. And the long road to recovery. Mm-hmm. So maybe you can interview yeah Philippe for the long road to one of the chapters because he's interviewing sure. people. Mm-hmm for that book. Sure. It's basically a, a look at life and recovery from a personal point of view. Yeah. Uh, so there's a little bit of humor in there. Yeah. No, that, that, it sure. is, it, there are some funny parts in humor. It's not all sitting in classrooms, uh, yeah. learning the 12 steps and uh, living in your sobriety. Yeah. Uh, there, there is some interesting characters. Uh, within Kevin, you're center. awake at four o'clock in the morning again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he'd wake up, he had a problem with his legs, so he'd bang around with a cane at four o'clock in the morning because he couldn't sleep. And of course, I'm trying to sleep. We don't have to get up until like a quarter to seven. 
for breakfast and uh, damn <laughs> every morning <laughs> or gra- a grandpa rob or what is it grand oh rob yeah uh, the rob father rob father that's what they call I mean, jim will probably know who the rob father is yeah interesting character yeah, yeah. colorful colorful yeah but it's it's interesting to see people when they first get into treatment and they look like complete burnt out oh, wrecks. Sh- yeah. And uh, w- when they f- uh, go to the closure, maybe 30 days, 60 days, 90 days after, it's, uh, the, the change in that person is huge. For but sure. the, the work really starts after you get out of recovery. Yeah. You know, it's nice to have that uh, training period, if you want to call it that, uh, to get mm-hmm. yourself sober. But once you get out that door, you know, you're pretty much on your own except for the fact that you're hooked in with a whole bunch of people for sure uh, who you can contact and say look i have a problem today or you can go to a meeting or whatever exactly so that's a bonus for us uh, what about uh, new designs for sbr yeah I'm, I'm all constantly designing that's that's the passion that i found and whenever i have free time i just you know which is very little now but it's, if i have any free time i'm designing so i, I mean we have i have probably hundreds and hundreds of designs that you know, hopefully we'll see the light of day, but you know, before well, I... Well, of course, you, you do 100, yeah. and maybe two make see exactly. the light of day, right? Exactly, yeah. And, you know, and sometimes I'll show some people, like, what do you think about these? And, like, why haven't you released this, you know? And so, um, but, yeah, so, so there'll definitely be more coming out. We're um, uh, we're securing a lot of funding right now to, to expand, and then as soon as we do, um, yeah, you know, the sky's the limit of, of how many designs... Well, because we this is basically groundbreaking. I mean, there is no other company out there I think that does this so, the, the, yeah the not we're the only one in Canada there's there's two actually in the United States I'm not, I'm not uh, they, they have a certain style and they can be sticking with it but I think w- what we're doing is way bigger and, and, and more and more uh, appealing well you're 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 t- what you're trying to do I think is be mainstream for sure and cool yeah and and tell the 15 and the 16 year olds that it's a cool to wear this gear for sure exactly yeah because like you said, you your inspiration came from your 15-year-old brother. Yeah. You don't want him to go down that path. Yeah, for sure. And that, I think that's your biggest inspiration. If you can keep your brother, which is your flesh and blood, from going down the path that you've gone. Yeah. And, and sure. give him understanding that. For sure. And it, it really begins, too, when you're really little. Like a lot of the hip-hop and, and it has all these and the drug references and, and movies and all that. So, yeah, it really starts with little. So if, if you know that it's there is an avenue that's cool to be sober and good, you know, and, and you kind of like you, maybe you won't um, start wearing it at, this, at the time. But when you do, you, you'll know there's an avenue to go there. Right. So yeah. you're, you're not going to be like, oh, well, if I if I stop drinking now, I'm going to be alone. You know, or all I have, or all I'll have is this, all these AA meetings with coffee, right? Yeah. It's it's this whole opens up the whole door of this whole community that you know we're cool, we hang out, we do cool things, and. But you know, a lot of twenty-one year olds want more, twenty year olds, nineteen year, because they're legal now. Mm-hmm. They want more than going to an AA meeting. Exactly. Yeah. They want to go to an AA meeting because mm-hmm. AA is relevant on an every in, in any given day, especially yeah. when you're struggling that day. Yeah. But as, like you said, you're what. 30 years old yeah. you still like to go out and have some fun for sure yeah I mean when yeah, you get to our age <laughs> yeah it's nice when you're younger to have somewhere to go other than your AA meetings like you can go to dances and that kind of stuff barbecues sure. whatever uh, you're still having fun yeah but without the use of uh, alcohol exactly right, yeah. 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 yeah yeah we want to definitely just create that whole you know movement of yeah, yeah. I, I like it I do I Thank wasn't sure like Glenn um, was talking to me about it, but I wasn't really catching the drift until you came over. Exactly where you, the vision. I can see where your vision is going. I can mm-hmm. picture it, mm-hmm. and it. it's uh, it's uh, overwhelming in some ways, but it's just such a positive message. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, okay. okay, we're gonna go to a commercial break because uh, Janessa has run out of words for to say for right now, <laughs> 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 and she's giving me the finger. Well, just kind of normal anyway. <laughs> And we'll be right back after these messages. Stay tuned. The competition has taken notice. Oh my god. Good luck keeping up with us. You're listening to Z Talk Radio Network. I'm Sarah. I'm Ellen. One night, I was at a bar. One night, I was at a bar. I had one too many drinks. I had one too many drinks. I got behind the wheel. I got a cab. A squirrel ran across the road. A squirrel ran across the road. I swerved. The cab swerved. I hit a guy. The cabbie just missed a guy. I wish I took a cab. 
Thank goodness I took a cab. You have the choice to save a life. Buzzed driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. If this station is not your cup of tea... Then drink coffee! 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 (laughs) Drink coffee! 100% news. 100% information. 100% guarantee. I thought you might say that. (laughs) You're listening to Z-Talk Radio Network. Okay, welcome back to Canadian X Talk Radio. It's Saturday night. I'm your host, Glenn Ferguson, joined by my wife, Janessa Ferguson, and uh, Philippe Cartel, in charge of the SBR Cartel clothing line and entertainment. Welcome back. Thank you very much. So, uh, Janessa, you were saying something about... Uh, well, I, you know, I put, I put Philippe on, on, on the spot. Uh-huh. Uh, let's, but, um, That's what we do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, no worries. Well, what I, uh, I talked about is... Um, you know, in the last commercial break, I kind of mentioned this zombie walk, and you were saying you were going to do a, a, a SBR event through an SBR Entertainment um, for Halloween, and you were still kind of working on it, bringing in some things. And I, I suggested this zombie walk because uh, I think that would be, you know, some of these people they dress up in just absolutely brilliant costumes, and so you you have two or three blocks, and they they all get in and they have a few prizes. And then that would bring, you know, then you have the SBR logo there and everything like that. So you kind of work together because, like I said, we're trying to raise funds. Mm-hmm. So we charge them to go, you know, into the zombie walk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they get best first prize, da-da-da-da. And uh, it, uh, you know, like $10. Key, key, key that up with a dance as well would be kind of nice. Or, well, that's why I say keying it up with his yeah. event so that the, he already has his ready-made mm-hmm. Yeah. Halloween yeah. into a silver... Could be like a zombie dance or something. Yeah, yeah. zombie yeah. zombie prom. That's zombie prom. I was yeah. going to do that last year, but we just couldn't... Or actually, I guess it was April this year. Yeah. And we went where, you know, you pop and you have, you know, stuff like that. But a zombie prom. Yeah. That's one of those things you need to advertise beforehand. Yeah. 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 Don't click, please. I'm clicking. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, I'd have a zombie prom, like a zombie walk. Get them all out and, and charge it, you know, uh, mm. s- say $10 because you got to cover your cost, right? People love zombies these days, right? Yeah, and it's such a big thing. It would work really well within our theme of being the paranormal society. Mm, for sure, yeah. And if you can queue up something like that with a sober dance, that's yeah. fantastic. For I sure. can see your mind working because yeah. just, and I mean, I threw this at you just because I came to my brain at this point. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I think it would work very well. And Halloween falls on a Friday night. Oh, nice. Yeah, which is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, because I know I have a ghost walk at the Mackin House on the 24th, and I'm going to be booking other ghost walks also. I don't know. Basically, we bring a psychic out, and we have all sorts of equipment, and we take people on places we walk, and we tell them about the history and what kind of spiritual activity and stuff and what they feel. And mm-hmm. That's what we call ghost walks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. But I think a zombie dance, especially right in, or a zombie walk, and then go into a zombie prom. Yeah. Stop tapping on the table. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I could see you know in, uh, like news agencies getting behind that. And oh, big time. Of, yeah. Yeah, because it would it definitely promote us as well as our convention, and that's you know, and that like I said, we're trying to obviously raise money because we got to pay for our stars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And with you having a background in graphic design, uh, coming up with a poster for that kind of event would be fantastic. Yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah, I don't know if you wanted to work, if you think about it. For sure, I definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, you know. No, no pressure or anything, because I'm going to put this on anyway, but I would like For rather sure. work with somebody. Yeah. Well, no, this definitely. Let's chat about dates and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is my... <laughs> my brain starts. For sure. <laughs> it starts. So uh, if anybody wants to find out about your clothing line, uh, where would they go to? to sure. Uh, well, you can find us all over social media. So um, uh, if you want to look kind of our lookbook, uh, Instagram. Uh, so at Instagram.com slash SBR Cartel. Um, also, we have uh, SBR Cartel, I mean, uh, Facebook.com slash SBR Cartel. Uh, we also have Twitter.com slash SBR, or at SBR Cartel. And, but you can also go to our website at www.sbrcartel.com and order, order we ship worldwide. 
Um, yeah, and then if you want to just email us, uh, info at SBR Cartel if you have any questions. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, looking at the, the hoodie that Glenn's wearing and the shirt that you're wearing. Thank you. Yeah, th these are work shirts. These are unfortunately not available for sale, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, yeah, you have to dress differently, right? For sure. Yeah. A little bit. But, yeah, th th thank you very much. Yeah, we, you know, we, I, I try to keep it minimalistic and, and relevant. And, yeah. yeah. So what kind of business meetings do you have coming up? I mean, well, we're trying to get a lot of um, um, sponsors for the event. We actually just got um, a pretty big sponsor in the New West, uh, New Westminster Last Door Recovery Center. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so I, I know Giuseppe really well. Um, and he uh, they've already bought a lot of tickets for, for the event, too. So, you know, we got with the, got them as a sponsor. Um, and uh, I, I, I really hope that Jody, Jody's store um, and from West Van, she's going to be a sponsor as well. And... Um, we just had a meeting with Playboy Energy Drink to, to sponsor drinks um, for the next event. Uh, oh, so nice. hopefully we'll have a good relationship with them. Um, if not, you know, we'll, we'll, we want to sit down with Red Bull and Monster as well. So we'll, we'll see which one we want to go with. But right now we, we are working with Playboy uh, Energy Drink because they did sponsor one of our last events. So. Oh, very good. Very yeah. good. So I, I know how, much, how difficult it is to generate funds uh, to keep a company going. Uh, have you found it difficult? Well, well yeah, absolutely. I uh, I was just driving here. I mean, I ran SBR Cartel, just the clothing part, by myself for about one year and six months, uh, just because I couldn't afford any other help, right? And uh, so yeah, it was definitely hard. And and I had to do other work. I had to do like side jobs to, um, to to make more hoodies because you would you'd sell a hoodie and then you, and you not you wouldn't have enough to to make more because you're just paying for your living expenses and yeah so definitely in the first couple of, you know in the first year it was definitely more, more and more difficult but as as word gets around um, it's gotten better and better and I think that with SBR cartel construction it, it's it's really it, it kind of cemented our, our our cash flow so you know we can be more creative well on top of that once you 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 go in house and you're creating your own hoodies and and so now your costs go down on that Absolutely, yeah. you know like you're not having to source out which you mean you have to pay that middleman yeah for sure yeah we definitely as, as soon as we 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 want to do this in the next 12 months is have our our warehouse that that will be a manufacturing all of our clothes in house so yeah we, we can't wait for that yeah because sure. it's definitely a certain cost you know because we we know when we go out and, and get our gear done we're not big enough to be able to do that so we have to source out for sure yeah and, and i mean he, he does a good deal for us but um still for sure yeah and then the thing is you can't really like experiment too right like you said if you're outsourcing because there's little techniques of, of of doing the hoodies and, and and doing the inks and stuff that you you know you, you can kind of stand out and, and but that takes experimentation that you know the the the, the uh, normal shop wouldn't usually do so yeah well, that, uh, that's the same as a tattoo artist, right? Exactly, yeah. So I noticed your tattoo. I oh. thought that was pretty cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is, uh, we actually, um, uh, well, I can maybe speak about our, our third event. We already have, a, I'll touch it briefly since you mentioned my tattoos. He's a, an amazing artist. His name is Arden Ross. Oh, yeah. Um, he's a worldwide known uh, tattoo artist, but he is uh, doing a lot of artwork, uh, oil painting, mixed media. Uh, he's just an amazing, like, um, uh, watercolor paintings that look like photographs of people. It's just amazing. And um, so we're trying to we're gonna have an art show with him and also this um, guy named Mark Jesperson. His uh, his name is Cash. That's his uh, uh, street artist name. And yeah, so we want to have a, an art show with both of them because their art is just uh, you know above and beyond. Wow. And, yeah. And then Mark's actually just did um, uh, for the Marleys. Bob Marley's uh, family flew him out to do portraits of Bob Marley. So like he's that good. Wow. So, yeah. That's so. somebody that. That's kind of that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's it's amazing to to uh, how we got in touch with this guy. You know, he's just yeah. He was he was literally at Bob Marley's residence, like painting, in the last week, and then we were sitting down. Next, you know, he's gonna do designs for SBR for us. Wow, that's, perfect. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, Philippe, for coming on the show tonight. Thank uh, you very much for having me. Love to have you again a sure. little bit later on uh, within your career with uh, SBR Cartel and Definitely. see how you're doing. Definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks.